On this week's Jeep Talk Show, we hear about a Louisville man who has a rather interesting chauffeur for his Wrangler. We introduce the new name for the show and showcase a couple new segments for the Grand Cherokees and CJ Tech. We wouldn't have a show if we didn't spread some of that YouTube love. We play a round of Amazon You Bought What? We hear from the mind of Nikki G and we read your reviews on the air. We talk about transfer cases and ABS systems on Wrangler Talk, color coordination tips to personalize your Jeep, variable resistors for gauge tuning, and things to consider when making your own cowl intake. Oh, and a Paps Boy stop by and say hi to all next Jeep Talk Show. You're listening to a 4x4 four by four, four by four Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the G Talk Show. <laughs> With Tammy on Wrangler. Tony and Josh on Cherokee. So sit back. Strap in. And brace yourself. First week in G. Well, I had a whole bunch of stories to go through this week, and this one popped up, and ordinarily I'd say something like this for, well, I'm going to just say it, Halloween. But it was such a cool story, I figured, well, we've got to do it no matter what. A Jeep scene driving around the Louisville area is turning heads for an unusual reason, because it looks like a skeleton is driving it. Mr. Bones, a prop skeleton belonging to mechanic Andrew Johnson, has become a regular sight driving Johnson's Jeep around Louisville and around the surrounding areas. Johnson said the driving skeleton was born out of his affection for the Jeep, understandable, which has its steering wheel and pedals on the right side, which is usually the passenger side for cars in the United States. Johnson installed a fake steering wheel in front of the left front seat and hired Mr. Bones as his fake driver. He says, I get everything from screams to, man, that is just fantastic. It's all just in fun, and it's just to make people smile. If I've scared anybody, I apologize. Well, that's mighty nice of uh, Mr. Johnson. And, well, he went on to say that Mr. Bones was originally a temporary feature of the Jeep two Halloweens ago, but locals demanded his return. People would stop me in Walmart, Kroger, Kmart, wherever, and say, hey, where's your skeleton? If you'd like to see pictures of Mr. Bones driving his Jeep, well, we've posted a couple in our random pick of the day section over at xjtalk.com. And hey, I want to say big thanks to all of you guys out there each and every week who contribute stories upon stories upon so many stories. And if I haven't gotten to one, well, it's just because either we're short on time or I'm long on stories. Either way, guys, keep up the great work and keep up those submissions coming. Send an email to newstips at jeeptalkshow.com if you've got a story or a response to any one of our stories here on uh, This Week in Jeep. Oh, we uh, we love your interaction, and we thank you very much for uh, all those stories that you're you're oh, sending yeah. us that sending us to the show. Uh, this, I mean, it's wonderful having people involved in the show, as as you can see by your screen with all three of these people that are involved in the show, and uh, we have a couple of more that we'll be introducing uh, later on uh, this evening. So very exciting too. Yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun, uh, and uh, you know, I had no friends when I was a kid, so this is kind of making up for it. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, there you go. XJTalk.com is where you go when you're not off-road. And now you can go to XJTalk.com when you're off-road, too. Using your smartphone, install the Tap a Talk app, then search for XJTalk. Take XJ Talk with you wherever you go. Jury duty, dinner with your spouse's parents, even, well, anywhere you need your XJ Talk fix. We welcome and look forward to your questions and comments. Dial 530-675-4102 and leave your message on our 24 by 7 voicemail. Tonight on Wrangler Talk, I've been doing a little research on how my analog brake system works with my four-wheel drive system. I'll share with you what I found out and some questions I still have. Yeah, that's some tricky stuff. We'll uh, definitely peel back the layers on that. Well, guys, we're going to go ahead and take a minute, and uh, we'll let you know, especially those of you who are new to the Jeep Talk Show, who the heck we are. Well, my name's Josh. You guys might know me as NW99XJ all over the webs, and you can find me especially over at jeeptalkshow.com, and of course, our one and only premier site, uh, the X, or xjtalk.com. We've got a great build thread <laughs> over there, and of course, lots of great Jeep stuff for you guys all to dive into. It's going to be fun remembering all the different names now. And, Good Lord. And, and we I don't just, want you to, I'm, 
it, we don't want you to forget about wranglertalk.com as well. So I've uh, been seeing some activity over there uh, as well. And uh, hopefully Tammy will be showing up over at wranglertalk.com and, and throwing up a few of her uh, items. And if nothing else, uh, point everybody to her, uh, her blog. Uh, Tammy, what's your blog? I, I always forget that. www.jeepmama.com. The audio is kind of messing me up. I was going to say, I was just going to, just going to tell the audience. We, uh, we talked in the, uh, the uh, pre-show. Tammy's actually hearing her audio as she speaks for the first time. So yep. it's, uh, that can really throw you off if you're not used to it. I mean, uh, I started messing around with listening to my own voice when I was like 13, 14 years old. So uh, I've just got used to it. Uh, uh, Josh has been doing the DJ thing for years. He's used to it. And uh, we, uh, we were uh, training Tammy into talking into the microphone, and it dawned on us, can you hear, hear what you're saying? You went, she says, no. So we fixed that up and really messed her up. So she's going to be getting uh, used to that, but I think, uh, I think she's going to like that eventually. Just get used to hearing my own voice is weird. <laughs> yeah, well, just don't give yourself bad ideas. That's all you got to do. There you go. <laughs> Well, I want to tell you about the 4x4 Radio Network. Uh, the As four, well you should. <laughs> the 4x4 Radio Network is a, uh, uh, just an amazing thing. It is a, a conglomerate of various off-roading podcasts. I mean, there's uh, the Jeep Talk Show, and of course there's the 4x4 Podcast with uh, Dan and uh, his crew over there. Uh, where Dan talks about all kinds of things uh, off road, so uh, whether oh, it's yeah. racing or overlanding, camping, and and he's currently uh, traveling from Missouri to Alaska, where he's being uh, he's actually um, uh, he work he he works for the army, <laughs> he uh, and he's moving, uh, taking a new post up in Alaska, and he's taken about three or four weeks to do overland, built himself a trailer. Uh, Josh actually got to meet him. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, he brought uh, he brought his Jeep and 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 that Overland trailer into my neck of the woods. Actually, just right by my house. Oh wow, uh, he was just cool. down the street. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, less than a five minute drive for me to go meet Dan. Did and, he slow down as he went by and wave yeah, at you? Or? Well, you know, uh, the wife was driving, <laughs> so it was pretty much tuck and roll. He just uh, popped out that pasture <laughs> door, and I've never seen a guy move that fast. But no, uh, he uh, he was with a uh, an Oregon Overland Expedition group, I believe, and. Uh, uh, they were out for a little uh, little after we after uh, session uh, dinner or something like that, and and I met up with him and the rest of the group there, and uh, you know exchanged pleasantries, and then uh, he gave me a nice little tour around his jeep and uh, and the trailer, and it was very nice. Got some pictures and stuff, and and he we we both wish we would have had more time. Um, he it was late. He has already had a long day. He had a very early morning the next day the next day coming up, and uh, and it was just it was amazing that he took the time that he did. Uh, I was really hoping that I was going to be able to get him in studio and uh, and do a little bit of recording and, and have some fun behind the microphone, but uh, I weren't able to make that happen this time around. But he uh, he did mention that, uh, you know, got family down here and stuff like that, so there will be more visits uh, to the Northwest uh, by Dan from the uh, 4x4, radio, or 4x4 Radio Network. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, they get confusing. Now, Josh, if they? you had a Facebook page, you could have posted those <laughs> pictures for us. Well, I did post those pictures up on xjtalk.com, yeah. uh, so you guys can go see those over there in our uh, random pick of the day section as well. So uh, that's uh, the uh, the 4x4 uh, podcast, and then there's also the Center Steer podcast. And Josh, uh, Tammy, I've been learning a lot about Land Rovers. And uh, I, I learned this, you know, they have a, uh, um, not a habit, but a reputation for not being, not running very long before you have to work on them. And, <laughs> and John explained that to me. He says, if you take a car from the sixties, because that's basically what the Land Rover is. That's true. <laughs> if you take a car from the sixties, you know, if you got 60,000 miles out of a, a car from the sixties or seventies, you were doing good. Plus there was points that you'd always have to change and spark plugs and, uh, there was always something you had to be doing to these vehicles. So it's, it's very much a, a, a 60s, 70s design. Uh, and, well, I think it was actually designed before that, but uh, that's the reason why they require so much maintenance and why they get the kind of the, the bad rap of not being very reliable. Uh, they just, it's just an older design, and uh, people love them. And, you know, we certainly understand that with the, the boxy things that, that we drive. I mean, Tammy's going to, uh, what is it, 2014 uh, JK, or is it a 2015, Tammy? 15. 15. So, you know, Tammy's even got a, a 2015 vehicle and it's boxy. It just uh, has the, the newer electronics and amenities to it. So, uh, yep. Anyway, John, you need to go listen to John and his team over there at the Center Steer podcast. That's C-E-N-T-R-E 
Why? Because it's British. <laughs> <laughs> and then the the uh, the most recent addition uh, to the Four by Four Radio Network is the Muddy Microphone Podcast, and uh, <laughs> it's it's a fantastic uh, program. We're uh, about off road uh, vehicles that are like ATVs, UTVs, and I'm learning a lot about that one too. Uh, now, yeah. if you if you're having a hard time finding these episodes. Um, most of these episodes, I mean, most of these shows are only doing a, a podcast once a month. So uh, there's out there's others that, that are out there. So you can go in the back catalog and listen to the ones that were prior to this. Right. But you can see you can listen to these new shows about once a month. If you don't see more than once a month, don't don't panic. They're not pod fading. That's about the, the mm-hmm. level at which they they come out. So remember to to visit the four x four radio network website at www.4x4 radionetwork.com. Well, I mentioned earlier that we were going to be bringing in a, a, a couple of more uh, victims here on the uh, Jeep Talk Show to give us information about various kinds of Jeeps. And uh, I would like to take a moment here to introduce you to Cody, who's going to be doing our uh, Grand Cherokee segment. Yay. Hey, guys, you've heard Josh and I talk about there's always a seat open on the XG Talk Show. And, of course, now it's called the Jeep Talk Show. And, uh, well, Cody with TrailChasers.net heard us talking about that. And uh, he recently got a Grand Cherokee. He's, he's very knowledgeable on Jeeps. He's had lots of them over the years. But uh, he said, hey, can I get in on this? Can I uh, uh, jump in and help out with the show and, and, and tell the audience more about Grand Cherokees? And boy, I tell you what, with the, the show name changing to Jeep Talk Show, it was a perfect opportunity. So uh, we've got uh, Cody here tonight, and he's going to give you an idea of the type of things that he's planning on doing with this Grand Cherokee segment. Cody, clue us in with what you're going to be doing. Yeah, thanks, Tony. Thanks for, for having me on, first of all. Second, um, I'm new to the Grand Cherokee. I've had several Jeeps, uh, as we've talked about in the past, but I wanted something different, and I ended up with a 2001 WJ. So I'm learning about the Grand Cherokee, and I want to share that with the audience. Uh, one of the things that we'll talk about is why I chose the WJ over some of the other vehicles. Um, review the Grand Cherokee models to see what's out there and give you guys a uh, an idea of what's there other than the grocery getters. Um, I, I've done some research comparing the specifications of the Grand Cherokee to the other Jeeps, which I think you guys will all find interesting. At least I found it interesting. And then we'll talk about some modifications and aftermarket s- support and uh, one of the things I want to do is actual numbers. I, I call it section. It's actual numbers where, you know, it's really easy to look at a build online and you know, get some ballparks to what it costs to make your Jeep go from stock to that. So I'm going to give you guys some actual numbers of what's been spent to get my Jeep to where it's at and give you an idea of if you did go this route, kind of what kind of funds you'd, you'd have to dump into it. But all in all, I'm, I'm learning and uh, just excited to share it with the audience. Well, I'll tell you, I think that uh, finding somebody that's not an expert who's new into it, but does, does have some past experience. Uh, I think that's probably the best person that, that can teach because I'm sure you've been in the situation where you've tried to teach somebody something and you forget, you, you forget the basics because you've already learned it. You've already gone through that uh, hard knock of learning it. So uh, this is a great opportunity, I think for our audience and all of our uh, folks that might want a grand Cherokee or maybe just got a grand Cherokee and would mm-hmm. like to build it up. It's a, it's a great opportunity to learn at the same time that you're learning. Yeah. And, uh, I have two friends that also just recently got into Jeeps. They're coming from the side by side world. One of them bought an XJ, but the other one also bought a 97 uh, ZJ grand Cherokee. So not only is he learning Jeeps, but he's also learning the grand Cherokee at the same time. So between the two of us, it's a, a hit and miss situation where we're just making it up as we go. Well, it's a hobby thing. It's a lot of fun, and uh, it's great just to have a Jeep and be part of the Jeep family. You know, and, and Cody, I just realized something. This is going to be a serious issue, something you're really going to have to work on. We don't have a name for your segment. Um, let's call it My Grand Adventure. Oh, I like that. Ooh. So maybe you've been thinking about this when I haven't. <laughs> no. <laughs> there's no notes there's no outline i don't have four episodes oh, ready to go yeah so we we, we can't have we, we can't plan that would be bad we don't this we don't plan on the show so you guys look uh, look forward to it like i'm going to the grand adventure i like that <laughs> now we just need to get some intro music or something i'll, I'll work on that so watch for cody and on the uh, the jeep talk show talking about uh, the grand cherokee thanks guys well, again, I want to thank uh, Cody for stepping up and uh, filling that fourth seat uh, for here on the uh, the Jeep Talk Show. The, the talk show keeps growing. 
Uh, we keep getting uh, great accolades from people. We've got lots of reviews tonight that we'll be getting to here uh, shortly. And uh, we just love the audience uh, participation. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. So absolutely looking forward to uh, Cody and his uh, grand adventure. And uh, we'll actually be having his first segment tonight. Looking forward to that as well. Can't wait to get, get into that. And uh, we were going to get into some voicemails, but... Well, you guys have apparently uh, taken some time off as well. We uh, took some time off around the holiday, and uh, apparently you guys are now doing the same thing, well, a week or so later. So <laughs> for the next show, all you guys have to do is dial our 24-7 voicemail line number 530-675-4102. It's a 24-7 voicemail line. It means nobody's going to answer. You don't have to worry about waking Tony up at 3 o'clock in the morning after a few beers and wanting to say hi. Uh, <laughs> not going to happen, but nonetheless, we will get you on the show. Another way you can do that is using our SpeakPipe feature over at jeeptalkshow.com. And it's really easy to use. All you need is a smartphone or a uh, tablet or even a computer with a microphone hooked up to it, and you guys can leave us a great-sounding voicemail over the Internet. Anything that attaches to the Internet that has a microphone. Uh, and when I say attaches, that you can't just plug it into the socket. It actually has to communicate, you know, through the proper protocols and stuff. So don't sue me if you uh, take your Lego and hook a microphone to it and try to hook it to the internet. It doesn't work. Uh -huh. I, I have to say that for Nikki G. That, that was a long <laughs> call from Nikki G that night. Oh boy, we had a lot of troubleshooting. Can you hear my Lego? <laughs> Let go of my Lego. So Let go of my Lego. <laughs> You know, Legos are a great uh, burglary uh, defense tool. The only problem, oh, yeah. the only thing is, is you have to put a sign for the burglars saying, "Please remove shoes." And uh, <laughs> once that, once they do that, you're all good. We need some damn voicemails, people. Voicemails, come on, weekly. Hook it up. Yes. All righty. So here we go. Now we got some interesting news that we're going to be uh, telling you about our uh, our YouTube stuff as soon as I can figure out where the music is. Here we go. Oh, oh yes. And Such there goes Tammy place. dancing. <laughs> yeah, I feel like back in the 60s. So, uh, as you guys know, we have this YouTube uh, channel for xjtalk.com. That's the, the website, and we've been using it for the XJ Talk Show. Well, now that we've switched to Jeep Talk Show, we have created a new YouTube channel. I know, just as soon as you got used to one, we start another one. So we'd like for you to take your take a little bit of your time and subscribe to Jeep Talk Show. Just do a search on Facebook for, the, for Jeep Talk Show, and you'll find it. Subscribe, and you'll join Josh as our only other subscriber <laughs> yeah you'd want to do that search on youtube uh you can also do that search on facebook as well we appreciate your subscription over there um but uh tony do we want to read out a few names this week oh we have to because we're not gonna yeah. we're not gonna forget people just because they're on the wrong page <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna have to restart the music you are anyway let's oh wait wait i can restart oh. it now i was gonna say we could read really fast here we go uh, uh, almost seamless <laughs> Well, guys, we pull four names out of the hat each and every week to give a little shout out to just to spread some of that love. You guys have taken the time to subscribe to us. Well, we're going to take the time to at least get your name out on the airwaves. So the first one is, oh, Ron Matherson. Do you have a problem with Matherson? Because there's not going to be any math. Well, that and there's no R in Matheson, uh, at least in Ron's last name. But uh, we'll go ahead and add uh, uh, Ode Erdine Burad. Bur Bur <laughs> Good God, I'm butchering your name, and I'm terribly Buriad. sorry. <laughs> Buriad. Then we have we Jay go. Schmidt, 250. Oh, oh see, that's how you a professional say. does it. <laughs> and Conrad Hugh Clink. Clink? I remember Clink from Hogan's Heroes. Yep. Oh, timely it's reference. Lovely. Guys, get your name on the list right now. Head over to YouTube.com, do a quick search for Jeep Talk Show, and make sure you get that subscription in right away. Yes. Oh, 913 subscribers, Josh. Did we switch it? Just click subscribe. Yes. Now my favorite part of the show, Nikki G. <laughs> what about when I'm talking, Tammy? I mean, isn't that good? Well, Nikki G just like makes me smile. All right. Uh, you look. sometimes make me smile, but not as often as Nikki G does. Well, let's just stop there. I'm starting to feel bad. Okay, I'm sorry. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, dang it, Super Croc, you ruined the season finale of Game of Thrones for me. You gotta plug your ears. Uh, I guess I'll just uh, have to just save my time and not watch it. And uh, 
I got a question for you, Josh. Okay, so let me get this straight. You're getting some dental work done in a van in an alley by some guy with a broken, <laughs> speaks broken accent. At what point that did that right? seem like a good idea? It was cheap. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, gentlemen, I will uh, chat you later. You have a good one. Oh, Bye. I am a, I am a cheap SOB, You too, know, I so. forgot about that. How are you doing, Josh? You don't no, seem to I'm be sick better. or Yeah, good. no, I'm all better. Yeah, some antibiotics took care of the, uh, took care of the infection and uh, a trip to a, uh, a real dentist <laughs> actually managed <laughs> to uh, take care of everything else. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, g- I'm good. Good. I forgot I asked you about that. That's a guy thing, I, I guess, though. You just you don't care as long, <laughs> as, long as the guy is... On it. <laughs> Take a lap. You're good. Give me some push-ups. Hey, this is Nikki G, and I just want to give a quick promo for next week's show. Uh, this week on the XJ Talk Show, Tony's going to talk about his temperature. Josh <laughs> is going to tell us what he wants to eat. And Tammy's going to entertain us with the horrors of being a new Jeep owner. <laughs> Hi right, guys, uh, you have a good one. Bye. I do have a temperature story this week, and I am always hungry. So. All right, and uh, our final uh, Nikki G entry. Uh, see, I don't know why anybody can't call a voicemail in when Nikki G can do three. Damn it! Hey, this is uh, Nikki G, and I've got a problem with the Jeep this week. Uh, I've got a little uh, slippy in my tranny, <laughs> which uh, I'll leave the obvious joke alone since there's a lady present but uh, i've heard you can tell if the transmission fluid is good by tasting it Mm -hmm. and i tried that and it tastes like a burnt sock (laughs) and uh, not like a little bit of pancake syrup it'll probably go good on pancakes (laughs) but uh, i was wondering i've heard a lot of stuff about changing the transmission fluid don't do it do it Uh, so uh, i guess my uh my question is if a turtle doesn't have a shell, is he naked or homeless? <laughs> All right, guys. I'll uh, chat you later. You have a good one. Bye. Naked and afraid. Down and out. This has been from the mind of Nikki G. Yeah, some good stuff there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, really quick, folks, if you are going to uh, swap out your uh, training fluid, uh, 50% is the rule of thumb. Uh, drive it maybe 500 to 1,000 miles and uh, maybe consider doing the other 50% or perhaps the next oil change would be the best opportunity. Uh, from what I've read, understand, and uh, everything in my experience has led me to believe that you don't want to swap out 100% of your fluid uh, when you do a training fluid flush or change. Yeah, and of course you can't since most of it's in the uh, torque converter. Uh, yeah, anyway. you'll have a good quart. Yeah, yeah. it just stays up in the court, torque converter anyway. Was it only so. a quart? I thought it was more than that. Yeah, it, it, it might be a little bit more. I, is it I like, might. Isn't, it, isn't it like 12 quarts uh, all together? Oh, no, it's not that many. I, I thought it was some uh, ungodly number. I was surprised. I can't remember what it is right offhand. Maybe somebody can uh, let us know on voicemail uh, what that, uh, that information would be. They can uh, uh, teach the teachers. And I loosely call us teachers. Yeah. Knuckleheads with Jeeps. <clears throat> so anyway, um, let's, uh, oh yeah, the 4x4 Radio Network. We got to do a little, little promo here. You're listening to a 4x4 Radio Network podcast. I was getting all excited about doing the reviews, Josh. Tell us about the reviews. Well, we do have several. We've been uh, putting out a call to action with you people for quite a little while now, and you guys have finally answered our calls. <laughs> finally. And have stepped up to the plate, <laughs> and, uh, and we have a plethora of reviews from, uh, in comparison to weeks prior. Um, we we got to go through all these because there is a lot of great stuff in here. And, uh, and of course, we love constructive criticism, a pat on the back, somebody just saying hello or sharing their experience about the show. Regardless of what it is, guys, we are going to put those reviews out on the air. And, uh, and well, the first one, uh, we've actually got a couple, in fact, from, uh, from the Twitter, as Tony <laughs> likes to put it. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and Nathan B. from uh, City Litter Guy um, at XJ Talk. That last one was a great interview. Inspiring, motivating, new vision for my rig. He's referencing, of course, the one and only Dean Murray interview. Oh, and if you haven't listened to that, you need to go listen because that was an hour-long interview. And uh, if you oh, like a lot of tech talk, we did yeah. a lot of tech talk. Oh, if you got if you got dreams of doing some really cool stuff to your Cherokee, you've got to listen to this interview because it's uh, it really takes a different approach. Yeah, 
uh, well, Dean takes a different approach approach on most yeah. things. And I'm hey, looking. Tammy, why don't you, I'm sorry. Tammy, I was, I was just going to say I'm looking forward to going uh, off road with Dean. So. Oh yeah, no, I man, I hope you hook up every camera you got uh, because that's going to be some <laughs> great footage. A couple really sweet red jeeps out uh, out on the trails. Yep. Tammy, we why don't you go ahead and, uh, and take this Keith next uh, this R? next one? Yeah. I you say his name anyway at jeep chalk show just wanted to say i really appreciate the comments about people who leave their jeep stock i'm a jeeper on a budget and so am i and if you didn't and hear I that to that's, talk about my stock jeep if you didn't hear that that was from keith far uh and that was also from the twitter he sent that to the uh, at uh, jeep talk show which is uh, something that i forgot to mention in the the show notes we have a a, a new uh, Twitter name uh, at XJ Talk still works. We would love to have your tweets there, but also send us tweets at at Jeep Talk Show. Yeah, make sure you guys are following us on the Twitter at Jeep Talk Show. So, uh, of course, we always call out each and every week for you guys to head over to iTunes, leave us a five star rating, and of course, a comment as well. And uh, and these reviews have been coming in well um, by the threes. In fact, <laughs> we have three for you tonight. Uh, so this is how I write a review by Patrick with the 92YJ. Uh, wrote on July 1st of, well, this year. Gave us a full five-star review. Thank you very much for that, Patrick. For all intents and purposes, this podcast is the foremost Jeep podcast out there. I couldn't imagine listening to a better podcast if I had bought one from a professional <laughs> podcast maker. From news, I love the bought part. Yeah. From news, Nikki G, tips, history, banter, and more. This podcast really sets an amazing precedence. Irregardless of whether you have an XJ or not, you will find information you receive here pertinent to your 4 by 4 nature. Call and leave them a voicemail and leave a review. It only took me a couple of years to do so. <laughs> <laughs> and regardless of how long it takes you, as long as you do it, guys, that's all that matters. And we very much appreciate Patrick taking the time uh, away from his 92YJ to leave us a great review. Yep, yep. And uh, here's another one that we uh, received uh, on the iTunes. It is a just simply a thank you from Richard Aww. Rib. Uh, gave us a five star. I'm new to this podcast thing. Heck, I'm new to an iPhone. He's apparently 57 years old. He put that in parentheses. LOL. I found you guys and girls and love your show. You folks help me through my work week with great info and a lot of fun. Thank you. And Tammy, why don't you take this last one? I, I think this is a good one for you. Additional hosts and a new name by R.J.R. Rodriguez, and he did this on July 8th. It was just the other day. Yesterday. Tony, Josh, and now Tammy, Jeep Mama, continue to bring great content every week, covering everything you may want or not want to know about the <laughs> Jeep community, and it keeps getting better and better. From news to tech tips and even all you need to know about the Henways <laughs> and tinfoil lunatics. That's I look great. forward to new content every week. Uh, I didn't read that far. Lunatics. I didn't read that yeah, far into I it. I didn't read that far either. That's, that's great. <laughs> tinfoil lunatics. Oh, well. the, the Henway. You know, Leah Laporte made a Henway reference the other day. Uh, oh, on no, uh, one of his tech great. shows, so it's a it's an old old joke. I'm the only one I remember hearing uh, say it though. But uh, anyway, well, big thanks again to uh, Nathan B, uh, Keith Farrar, uh, we've got Patrick, Richard Rib, and of course R J R Rodriguez as well. Thank each and every one of you guys for taking the time to leave a review and leave us a five star rating as well. So the rest of you out there, well, it is due time. You guys need to step up to the plate as well and continue bringing those reviews in. If you haven't left one in a while and, well, we've obviously made some changes to the show, well, let us know what you think. Yes. Oh, and, uh, you know, normally we would stick in what's happening on XJ Talk right at this this point, this juncture in time. But uh, the show is just so full packed with Excuse everything. Me, yes. Excuse <laughs> me. Can I introduce something? Can I interject something at this point in juncture? No. Okay. <laughs> the hell? <laughs> you here are a nerd. <laughs> you here are a nerd. Oh no! How many times is it going to play? You here are a nerd. Oh, apparently too many times. Four or five, I think. There's <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> somebody's got to edit that. So anyway, uh, we're we're going to forego the uh, what's happening on XJ Talk this uh, this week, uh, so we can do the rest of this uh, good old show. But it doesn't keep you from going over to xjtalk.com or even wranglertalk.com and see for yourself. What's happening on those two great Jeep forums? 
So I guess, uh, you know, I got my mouse speed is like really fast and I, I go to scroll normally and I'm like off the page. So uh, let's do a little Wrangler talk. And uh, uh, Tammy, you ready for some Wrangler talk? I think so. We'll no no choice, huh? <laughs> shut up and listen. Shut up. So shut up. You don't shut up. Man, shut up, Shane. Hey, <laughs> shut up and listen. It's time for Wrangler talk. It's time for G-Mama. <laughs> I wish I knew who all those voices were. Um, Tony and Josh, you know, the past three weeks, I have been posting on my blog about some off-roading tips in the snow, water, and mud. And this week, I did some off-roading tips about in the snow. And one of my tips was about pump your brakes if you lose traction on the ice. Well, a follower pointed out that won't work for my Jeep Wrangler. My Jeep Wrangler, it's a 2015, is equipped with ABS, the anti-lock brake system. That means the Jeep's computer does all the thinking and the work, so I don't need to pump the brakes. I just let the Jeep do the work for me. And I'm still not sure how I feel about that, but research shows that anti-lock brake systems have prevented many, many accidents. So I guess I need to go with the research and trust my Jeep. But it got me to thinking about how the ABS affects my driving when I'm off-road. So I did a little searching, and I found one website that said it could affect the off-road driving on dirt roads. Then I read someone say that when you shift into four-wheel low, it automatically turns off the ABS. But I can't seem to find that officially anywhere. But I know, and I actually, I just um, instant messaged one of the salesmen at the Jeep dealer that I bought my Jeep from. I asked if when you shift into four-wheel low, does it turn off the electronic stability control? And it does. I'm still trying to confirm if it automatically shuts off the ABS. So I'm still searching for that information, but it, it sounds like I don't really need to worry about that when I'm crawling at a slow speeds on the trail. But when I'm on a higher speeds off road, especially the ice ones, I'm just not really sure. And I'm not sure what happens when you shift into four wheel high. So still searching on that. I don't know if it's, I need to really know about it, but I, I want to know. So I don't know if you guys have any input on that. Well, a lot of vehicle stability control systems uh, usually use a degree of braking, and, and they tie into the ABS systems to control wheel spin. And and once you, if if you can stop a wheel from spinning or or slow its rotation down, you can change the attitude of the car uh, or the vehicle uh, in this case. Um, and I've heard uh, of guys with older vehicles uh, like the uh, the late '90s Cherokees and stuff like that who have ABS that they don't want that ABS feature uh, on the trail. And so all they do is they go uh, under the dash or into the engine compartment to pop open the uh, fuse cover and just pull the fuse for the ABS system. Now, of course, this is going to turn the light on on the dash, but the ABS, a ABS system will no longer work. Uh, however, the brakes still will, and the power brake feature will all still work as well. You'll just have a little light on in the dash, and if you ever have to uh, have an aggressive braking maneuver, uh, at speed on cement, well, just remember, uh, those wheels are going to lock up and you will go sliding. Uh, so I do not recommend you people uh, removing the fuse to your ABS system uh, because it is quite dangerous. So um, just do that uh, with, a with a word of caution and warning, please. Yeah. So you think when I shift into four low, the ABS is like turned off in a sense? No, nah, I don't know that it's necessarily turned off, but typically ABS systems respond during heavy braking maneuvers at at typical I, typically higher, higher speeds. speeds, and you're not going to see those in a four wheel drive in a, in a four low situation. Yeah, I was going to say Let's I wouldn't I wouldn't think that it would. Uh, it didn't make sense why it would be disabled unless there's something going on that or some weirdness that would happen in, in those situations. Now, that's why not would, electronic stability control is disabled when I shift into four low. Well, yeah, because you don't, you're essentially engaging four low is tail, telling the vehicle systems that you are about to go off road. You're going to be off camber. Uh, you're going to be in situations the vehicle is not, does not see when it's on the road. So it's normal on road driving characteristics uh, are, are going to change. They're going to be altered and, uh, and may not necessarily need to be turned on. So it could, the vehicle, once you go into four low, the vehicle could be telling uh, the, the computer system to say, hey, 
we're just going to turn off these systems because there's no way that we're ever going to need them in these situations. Okay. Now, four high would be different though, right? Correct, because for high, you can still have, you know, 45, 55 mile per hour speeds. Not that you'd necessarily want to continue that for very long, uh, but nonetheless, in four high, you could be at a higher speed where the ABS system would want to get engaged. So, yes. Yeah, it's all about braking for ABS, uh, I would think. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think they use that for stability control. I can't imagine why they would want to. Just uh, all about keeping the, the, the wheel from locking up during braking. So, I'm so bummed now because I learned how to, you know, drive on the ice when you're skidding and everything by pump the brakes, and now I don't need to use it anymore. I kind of, uh, you know, I know that it's really good the things that they're, they're putting in the vehicles these days, but I would really like an override button. If you remember the old Star oh, Trek, yeah. timely reference, Master I know. override, yeah, absolutely, I'll yeah. override for everything, so you get the real well, driving experience. And the, after all, that's what we're doing when we go off road. We want right. that driving experience. It's not a hovercraft, you know, where you just right. look at the scenery. Well, I, I know that there are many vehicle manufacturers out there that do uh, put in a vehicle stability control bypass switch. You can turn that feature on or off, uh, and typically yeah, you'll see in that Jeep. in. Yeah, you can typically oh, you'll good. see that in rear wheel drive, uh, rear wheel drive vehicles, um, where you know you'd want to break the rear wheels loose every now and again. <laughs> so, you know that's uh, uh, that's it's something you're going to see every now and again, and and especially I would imagine more so now as we get into more higher tech vehicles, we see a lot more technology uh, being implemented into vehicle design and stuff. Uh, this kind of stuff is going to become commonplace in another five or ten uh, years. You, you know, we're having it's too all much about safety. Yeah, we're yep. having we're having too much fun here, guys. We need to move along. I'm sorry. What is it? Uh, I, I know we're talking about uh, the jeeps, but uh, what is it that he says? It's a jeep talk show, guys. So uh, <laughs> let's get over to our our fun. Uh, you bought what segment? Amazon.com and the Jeep Talk Show present. You bought what? what? Now this is a strange thing, Josh. What what is this Amazon? You bought what? Well, Amazon and the Jeep Talk Show have got a great little relationship set up, guys. And uh, how this works is they've given us the author, well, the ability to uh, to give you guys the ability to support your favorite off road podcast. Well, all you have to do is head over to JeepTalkShow.com or XJTalk.com. You guys are going to see an Amazon banner there on the main page. Clicking on that will take you over to Amazon.com where you guys can pretty much shop for anything you could possibly imagine and get some of the best prices uh, available on the web. Uh, but what Amazon has agreed to do is give us a small little kickback from each of those purchases made after clicking through our site. So it's a great way to support the show, great way to keep us giving you guys new content, and of course keeping the lights on at the Jeep Talk Show Control Studios. Now, the other thing that Amazon has agreed to do is give us a list of what is being purchased. Now we don't get to see who is buying what, and therein lies some of the fun because you guys will occasionally sneak in a little curveball and uh, and throw us for a loop, and we have some fun with the descriptions of uh, of these said products. Now we don't have anything fun quite like that tonight, but we do have some great products that we're going to showcase for you guys that some of you have taken the time to click through our site and purchase on Amazon.com. Goody. I like Amazon. You bought what? You never know what somebody's going to buy. It's always fun to see what people are buying out there. You know, they're oh, listening absolutely. to the show. No, we've gotten everything from uh, bacon salt to Jeep parts. I mean, it really is that diverse. That that one episode was bacon salt and panties, wasn't it? Crotchless. Crotchless panties. panties. Yes, and I think there was a Bane mask in there as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. Was, that was, see, God, this that is was why you guys show. need to go back and listen to the past shows. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find. So uh, let's uh, let's get going with this one. Oh, Warrior products. Uh, they got yeah. Some, they got some good stuff. This they is sure a uh, 2.5 inch, 6 degree leaf spring shims for $51.71 and free shipping. So uh, this is good for whenever you have driveline vibrations, usually after a lift. Uh, I right. guess it could happen if you got spring sag too, Josh. Anything that changes the angle of the pinion in relation to the transfer case. So uh, you put these shims in to correct that angle. And if you don't know what angle that you need, you can go over to xjtalk.com and look at the several posts from Steve 4.3LXJ uh, of uh, Jeep Tips fame here on the show. And uh, he will tell you exactly how you go about uh, finding out what shim degree you need. But uh, got driveline vibrations, correct? Driveline pinion angles. It's easy installation, made from metal. 
<laughs> not balsa wood. Well, now I do know that they make some out of aluminum, and those those can be kind of an issue. So it's it's best to get you know the bare steel ones, not aluminum yeah. or any kind of alloy. And uh, more than four degrees and less than eight, so it's better than yours. <laughs> You know, I think I am running six degree shims on mine, so uh, these uh, uh, these definitely are, are right in that sweet spot. I had to remove mine. Uh, my my leaf springs came with shims, and after I put in my uh, uh, slip yoke eliminator, I had some vibrations, and uh, I uh, went over to the, the, the xjtalk.com, read that post from uh, from Steve, and figured out I needed to remove mine because it would have put it in the right angle uh, for the. Uh, uh, it, I'm gonna say cardigan. It's not cardigan. It's cargan, right? You screwed double, me up with a cardigan, double cardan, cardan, yeah, cardan. The gu- double cardan jo- joint. Cardigan <laughs> sounds so much more warm. It and does fuzzy. sound warm and fuzzy. Yes. <laughs> well, this is uh, out of the automotive section as well, but this is more of a builder part than anything. Uh, so, for, the, for those of you who uh, want to make an extreme upgrade to your Dana Thirty front axle on your Jeep, uh, well, you can change uh, the knuckles over to WJ knuckles, and those will be Grand Cherokee knuckles. Yes. Cherokee or the Grand Cherokee knuckles do fit on a Dana 30, but you will need this one piece in order to make it work. And this is the JKS weld on flange spacer for the WJ knuckle swap on a Dana 30. This is a solid steel builder part, guys. This is a weld in part, so uh, this is not something that you you can bolt on. And this, of course, is uh, just one of many necessary parts needed for doing a WJ knuckle swap. Uh, This cannot be used, however, as a Frisbee or jewelry. (laughs) Well, so keep that in mind. You know, the right size chain. Well, yeah, true. <laughs> Flavor Flav can pull something off. I'm sure you could too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And now we have something from the electronics department. It's oh, Maduro this is always some good stuff. Amplify SBN 25 Bluetooth wireless stereo headphones slash headset with built in mic. The retail packaging. You can get in purple. Yeah, <laughs> you should click on, you should click, I got a picture of there for you. And that's why I, I pulled this item out specifically for you, Tammy, because I know that you love the color purple and these things have got purple all over them. Cool. Yeah. And it's only nineteen ninety five. dollars um, Stream music from an MP3 player before switching to calls on a smartphone, noise suppression and echo cancellation technology for clear audio, vibrating call alert, me- Mic with mute option, comfortable around the neck design. Um, let's see, battery life up to 15 hours talk time, 10 hours music, and up to 15 days on standby. That's pretty cool. I'm going to have to look into that. Yes, that's, uh, that's pretty nice. So don't forget, guys, uh, it's really cool to buy things online and have it just come to your door like magic and even and cooler. Sometimes it comes that day. Oh, it's weird. It's amazing. It? It's freaky. So, uh, and how much cooler it is, is it to go over to uh, the Jeep Talk Show or xjtalk.com, click the Amazon banner before you make that purchase, and uh, you get, get it read on the show, potentially. Potentially. If you, get, if you buy something really dirty, it definitely will be read. Oh, yes. <laughs> Let's just say if you found it, if you have one of MP these in your is. nightstand drawer, there's a good chance you're going to hear it on the show. <laughs> All right. Well, that's uh, like I, like I like to say. That's enough of that. We just found out what you bought. Oh my god! I just can't believe that made it on the list. <laughs> well, you know, I was mentioning that we uh, we filled our fourth seat for the show, and we've also filled our fifth sheet. <laughs> Slow down. Fifth yep, no, he- seat. <laughs> there we so, are. And <clears throat> so we uh, we've also added uh, Anton. Is it Anton or Anton? Anton. I'm, I'm gonna say Anton. Which we'll he, call him Super Croc. He didn't, yeah, he didn't correct me in the interview. So he either he was extremely polite or I had it right. So uh, Anton has the this a couple of CJs that he's uh, using one for parts and, and another one that he's actually going to drive around. And he's going to uh, uh, inform and charm us with his information on the Jeep CJ. And uh, we got a little bit of a promo here for uh, an intro for uh, Antron. You know him as Super Croc on uh, XJTalk.com and in the chat room. I believe he's in there tonight. Yep, he's here. Hey, guys. We're here tonight with uh, Antone. You know him as Super Croc on voicemails, and you know, may, may have even seen him in the uh, chat room during the uh, XJ Talk Show uh, or uh, Jeep Talk Show, depending on which, which uh, show you'd like to call it. Uh, Antone has agreed to do a CJ segment for us. And, well, Antone, give us an idea what the folks are going to hear on your, uh, your new segments to the show. 
Well, the, there'd be two main things for my show. One will be kind of an overview and getting into the nitty gritty of the different CJ models. And more often will be what I like to call Project Phoenix, which is rebuilding and re kind of resto modding a my CJ. And right now I have two CJs. One is a parts donor and the other one will be a recipient. But for right now, we'll, we'll like the segments more about those. And then it will hopefully be when I get around to, to recording them. Oh yeah. Well, we understand that. I mean, like I was telling you before we started recording, this is a, a hobby thing and we all have lives that we have to lead, but we certainly appreciate you jumping in here and uh, give us some more information about the CJs. Now your specific CJ, what model is it? Mine's a CJ seven. And how long have you had it? My first, my donor rig I've had for about two years now, year and a half ish. What's your ultimate goal with that? Is it going to be a, a full restore or, or are you actually going to mod it to, as a, a four wheel drive uh, off road vehicle? It will be a little a bit of both. I'll upgrade a lot of systems that, that weren't as good like headlights and, oh, yeah. and different stuff that like sense. that. Mm -hmm. And so, then the, my recipient Jeep has some neat features to it that, um, I'll be able to take and restore and bring into uh, more modern type. So. Yeah, that's great. Well, I'm sure you'll be able to uh, supply us with lots of, lots of pictures so that we can overlay on top of your uh, reports. And uh, so your goal is to give us an idea of what's going on with your Jeep and also to bring us up to date it, with just general CJ knowledge, correct? Correct. Excellent. Well, and and we look forward to your report on your CJ coming up on the next Jeep Talk show. Thanks a lot, Anton. That sounds good. I hope to talk to you guys fairly often, Tony. Well, we're certainly uh, happy to have Anton join us. And, you know, it takes a lot of guts for somebody to st uh, step up and be become part of the show. Tammy's yeah, done it. He does Josh have a lot it, of so. guts coming around here like that. A lot of guts <laughs> from that guy. <laughs> So I don't know. I, I don't know about you guys, but do you feel bad for the donor Jeep? I just I hate the idea that there's going to be Jeep there that's just going to be you know well, nothing. Yes and no, you know? because look at you look at it this way: when he's all done and everything has been stripped off from that, and it's basically a rusting pile of something over on the side of the house. Well, that's when you've got John Q. Public that's going to drive by, and he's going to see that, and he's going to be one of those guys that's just a huge fan of like American Pickers or something like that. And he's going to find that, he's going to see that, and he's going to come up and he's going to knock on Anton's door and he's going to be like, hey, is that tub for sale? What? Is that uh, is that frame for sale? Yeah, and, uh, and whatever so. you got over there, is that, is that big pile of metals for sale? <laughs> and, and it's going to end up going to a new home. And it'll end up probably so. as another project. I, I, I that's that's the way I like to see it. I like that spin, even if it's not, if it doesn't happen, I like even that spin. Even if it's no legitimacy <laughs> or chance whatsoever gives me a little bit of hope get a bunch of dirt and some flowers and put it up oh, there you go yeah a little okay. repurposing well you've seen i'm sure you guys have seen the bars like somebody took a tj and turned it into a bar next to a pool table oh yeah well yeah uh, matt from bleep and jeep he's got the back end of a yj i think in his shop uh and yeah. he uses that as a little uh a little bench a little uh a little chill out set, uh, a place or something have um like their tables kitchen tables or end tables with the grills yeah, it's uh, I, I, it's still a little sad. It's almost like uh, your uncle Joe's arm hanging on the wall, though. It's just like you know, oh, you'd boy. like to see you'd like to see Joe with it, using it, you know, slapping people around. But uh, anyway, speaking of slapping people around, I've been looking forward to uh, getting to this uh, this promo for our interview that you'll be hearing later this week. You'll have to do this as a separate download uh, of the Jeep Talk Show, and uh, you've seen them before here on the show. I know that you've been over to their website, uh, to their uh, their YouTube site. If you haven't, you need to go over there and subscribe. But anyway, let's hear it from, uh, well, I'll just let them introduce themselves. Hey, hey folks, I'm Clyde and this is Tommy. Welcome to the Lola. Cheers. <laughs> so as you guys can see, we've got uh, Clyde and Tommy here from uh, the Paps Boys from the Roadhouse. And we, uh, we did a little interview tonight. And 
Uh, well, Clyde, what all did we cover? Well, we went over how Tommy and I met in the first place. Yeah. We met in Japan three, oh, no, six years ago. Something like that. Seems yeah. like seven, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what else did we go over, Tony? Well, we uh, definitely talked about the YouTube channel, and that's how we came to know you, uh, was through the YouTube channel. We really enjoyed hearing about that and what's going to be coming up on your future YouTubes. You know, the, the guys might actually get outside the roadhouse sooner or later with their camera. Well, we'll try what we can. Uh, but in the meantime, check us out on YouTube forward slash Paps Boys, P-A-B-S-T-B-O-Y-S. Oh, and then we had some sweet yeah. conversation about the Cherokee, didn't we, Clyde? Yes, we did. We covered on uh, what we've done so far and a little bit about what we're going to do in the future. Excellent. So you guys check out the bonus episode. You'll have to download it separately than from the normal XJ Talk Show. The bonus episode, the Paps Boys in the Roadhouse interview. Well, definitely be looking forward to that. I I'm a chameleon. Yeah. The honky tonk man says I can't dance and I can't sing, but I can make romance. <laughs> Elizabeth knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And this is the 60s. <laughs> oh yeah. And another 180. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Of the crowd. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's amazing what you'll do when you get enough beers in you. <laughs> Little macho man Randy Savage there for you at the end. <laughs> now, uh, love the hat. Yeah, I was going to say yeah, my my co-host great. here can't really watch the uh, the video live because I'm not set up to broadcast yeah, I'm, video. I'm so still, I'm, I'm seeing the uh, the, uh, the the thirty second of that here. little bonus part of it uh, the yeah, 30 second so not, delay that's great yeah. <laughs> he, he pulled that hat down and stuck it on stuck the the uh the sunglasses on and it was hilarious i said let's do this let's just have Heck it yeah let's have it in the promo <laughs> <laughs> so anyway no good times guys and if you ha if you haven't checked out the paps boys yet if you have not yet subscribed to that channel well you are definitely lacking in your duties that is something you need to do post haste head over to youtube <laughs> right now and check out the paps boys Subscribe to their channel. Great content, lots of great videos, and entertaining as well. Big fans of the show, and I'm big fans of their channel as well. Oh, they're they're hilarious. I've been spending quite a bit of time on Skype talking to uh, Clyde, and uh, very knowledgeable on a, a lot of different subjects. And uh, we will sit there, and I'll tell Clyde, I got to go to work in the morning, as does he. So by three, I'm getting off of Skype with him to. Uh, to go get some sleep, it, it, be, me being up by at, by uh, around three o'clock is not that big of a not that big of a deal anyway. But still, it's uh, it's one of those conversations you get into, and it just just carries on and carries on. So uh, lots of fun, uh, both uh, watching those guys on uh, uh, on the YouTube and also to uh, doing the interview with them. So again, this coming week, uh, this uh, the show is released on Mondays. So around uh, Wednesday or Thursday, look for the interview. With the Paps Boys, and it does just the Clyde. It's Tommy and Clyde, so it's uh, it's it's everybody. So anyway, let's uh, let's jump over to our campfire side chat, which surprisingly, Josh is a, a very popular segment with the folks. Heck yeah! Howdy, howdy. Well, half the West Coast is burning, but we got a fire going right here, so uh, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're good. You know, Dan was talking about that. He's up in Canada now, Dan from the 4x4 podcast, uh, traveling up to Alaska. Can you smell the Alaska. smoke, Josh? Oh, we can see it. Uh, oh, really? The, uh, can. The, sunri oh the sunrise this morning was... I have friends in North Dakota who say it's like really bad, the smoke. They can smell yeah. it. Yeah, it's it's not quite because it, it's it's up high enough right now to where it's just the jet stream is carrying it up and over us, and a little bit is coming uh -huh. down into the lower atmosphere. But uh, nonetheless, very very cool sunsets and sunrises. This morning sunrise uh, from all those wildfires burning was just absolutely amazing. The way the uh, the haze was playing with the sun. So, so yeah, you, you guys know about the uh, the dust that's being blown over from Africa, right? Do not know anything about African dust. Yeah, apparently uh, a lot of dust or is being these picked bags up. of it. I will sell you. No, I'm just <laughs> a lot of <laughs> dust is being a lot of uh, dust is being picked up from Africa and and carried aloft, and it's uh, keeping uh, hurricane formation from occurring. Uh, wow, you know. So anyway, we're getting a lot of dust 
from Africa here in the United States. And when you said about the sunsets, it made me think of that. And I was curious when they were talking about this on the news, if it's from Africa and now in the USA, would that be considered African American dust? Oh boy. <laughs> now the Paps boys just said they're right in the middle of all the smoke. Yeah, that's what uh, that's what Dan was saying. They actually were driving down a freeway that was closed uh, because of the wildfires uh, right after they passed through. So there uh, is uh, some very amazing uh, images on a Google image search for African dust. And no, I'm not talking about weird stuff. It's actually pretty no, cool meteorological. This, kind it was of not stuff. set up. It was not a setup for a joke. It's really happening. So it's just yeah. a lot of dust is being carried over oh, across the darn. line. Well, how well, I is know that? I heard the hurricane season is supposed to be less severe this year. Yeah. Well, there's uh, yeah. upper high, upper level level winds that are shearing the top off of uh, storms, and it's funny. I think this is just more evidence that uh, the U.S. is in weather modification. Yeah. Very well. Very well. Could be. <laughs> Well, speaking of modifying temperatures and stuff like that, Tony, you have installed a variable resistor. You've been talking about it for, well, quite a while now uh, to uh, fix the miscommunication between the uh, temperature sending unit and uh, and the actual instrument cluster. I did uh, this. The instrument cluster has not been reading very accurately lately. Uh, not at all. I did this and in installed my onboard air system and air horn. No way. Really? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, so, <laughs> I was because I was I knew there was going to be a video falling following immediately had you actually done that. And I was going to be surprised that that video wasn't out yet had you done it. Yeah. But uh, but no, now we know why that video is Seriously, not out. I found that I needed one more one more one bore part and I ordered it from amazon.com. Uh, oh, very good. Uh, I was I was surprised that they carried Henways. So once that one that is in <laughs> no, don't, don't do it, Tammy. So uh, anyway, yeah, the variable resistor, I'm, I'm really uh, psyched about this because, you know, electronically it makes sense. Now, the, the, if you haven't been following along, I came up with this because I was like, I've been fighting this uh, uh, heat creep situation on the highway for many, many years. Everything in the cooling system has been replaced. Some things have been replaced four and five times. Uh, the, like the radiator, trying different ones to try to resolve this issue. And it wasn't until I was uh, uh, told by CARVS uh, over in Australia about this Australian device called a uh, engine mon monitor, I'm sorry, engine watchdog TM-1 that I was, uh, I bought this little unit. I was able to hook a lead uh, mechanically to the thermostat housing and it started giving me the temperature readings of what the thermostat was the thermostat housing was reading which is right there next to the the temperature sending unit so i was seeing between 20 and 30 degrees uh cooler temperatures than what was being reported by the obd2 computer so not not just guessing what the gauge was saying but actually reading it digitally from the computer so i said screw this i'm going to make me an adjustable uh, temperature sensor. I well, that makes sense. I you alter the because that that gauge is essentially voltage controlled. The, the more yeah. voltage it sees, the more it moves, or something along those lines. And and well, changing that voltage by altering the uh, uh, the resistance against that voltage, well, you can basically and using a variable one, you can for all intents and purposes dial that gauge in. Now, I, th I think what you're saying is accurate, but let me lay this out a little more uh, uh, clearly so people um, perhaps get a, a good idea what's going on. The computer, the, the PCM, reads the information from the sensor and then supplies the voltage to the meter so that it you know interprets what it's seeing from the sensor. So the, the sensor actually tells, you, tells the computer uh, in resistance. So the hotter it gets the lower the resistance goes on the sensor. So if, if I wanted to adjust the reading up, in other words, I wanted to make, uh, make it read uh, a, a lower temperature, I would need to add resistance. So I cut the lead, one of the two leads, put in a variable resistor, you know it as a potentiometer or a volume control. That's right. <laughs> and I, I, got, I used a 1K ohm resistor, so it varies between 0 and 1,000 ohms. Stuck that in there. Uh, I looked at my uh, uh, OBD2 reading, so I was looking at the temperature that the computer thought it was, and I was looking at the temperature from the uh, engine watchdog TM1, and I adjusted them to be the same, within a couple of degrees, uh, the same readings. Now, I've adjusted it a little low, 
but coming home the last few days in 95 degree air temperature, driving 70 and 75 miles an hour, it, it did not indicate an overheat situation, which it usually does by the end of my 20 mile ride uh, oh. home. And, uh, but, but it also didn't go over 210. <laughs> so I really like seeing it around 210, but my uh, engine watchdog was reading, I think it was a, a 224 today. Which I think is reasonable in 95 degree temps, driving 75 miles an hour around yeah. 3,000 RPMs because of With a the AC system. on. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, uh, so yeah, that, that's, that that sounds about right. So uh, that's that's really weird. It, it you know it kind of works up to a certain point, but then once you get past that point, you're getting a different reading. So. Uh, no, I just don't think I have it adjusted right. I just need to. Oh, I think okay. I, I think I have it adjusted a little a little low. All right. And uh, the, the idea here is, is that I'm a little concerned about that, uh, that small variable resistor because it's something that would go on a PC board. And, you know, it does get quite warm under the hood of the Jeep. Right. And this is right there. And you can see these pictures on xjtalk.com. There's a post over there. I, I don't have the link for you. but Well, isolating those contacts from oxidation is going to be your, your biggest key. So I, what I would recommend, Tony, is uh, getting yourself like a... You know those little tiny plastic cases that that a um, a, uh, a glasses mm -hmm. repair kit would come into. Sure. Um, you know, use one of those or something. Put the potentiometer in that, and then fill the whole thing up with epoxy. Well, that's uh, that's a great idea. But actually, uh, and what I was getting to here is, I'm going to measure the resistance once I have it once I have it tuned properly. I'm yeah. going to measure the resistance of that variable resistor. It's very tiny, and I think it's very susceptible. And you know how uh, uh, electronics will change based on temperatures if it falls outside its operating range. So this yeah. is just really a test situation. I'm going to oh, okay. I'm going to read the the temperature uh, not the temperature the resistance value for the proper setting, and then I'm going to get me a, a one or two five watt resistors, and then oh, okay. then a, and basically give me a fixed value. And I'll put that in there, and I'll I'll do a bunch of crap to it to make sure that it's. Uh, I think the five watt resistor would would, uh, especially if it had the little gold band on it, which means it has a like a five percent tolerance, if I'm remembering right, would would do much better in a high heat environment. But I'm I'm really excited because I'm actually not seeing uh, either the 250 with the alarm going off or uh, the the first notch past 210. So it worked. Uh, it made sense that it would work. It, it is working. I've been running it since Wednesday. See, I knew that it would too, because everything on paper says, yeah. "Yep, that's going to work out," and uh, and sure enough, it did. So, Tony, glad to hear that you you're basically heading in the right direction. You got uh, you got some light at the end of the tunnel, as it were. And I will say that I want to make sure everybody's clear on this. Uh, I'm just basing this off of this little piece of equipment that I bought. It may not be right either. I think it's more right than what my computer is reading. But, I would have to agree. But uh, so there's uh, another step that I still need to do. I need to take a, uh, a a temperature sender, stick it in a pot of boiling water, read the resistance, and then I'll know exactly because you know at, at sea level it's 212 degrees. So I'll know that if it's boiling water, it's 212 degrees, and then read the resistance value, and then I can adjust it according to hmm. real values, a set value, mm -hmm. not just a guesstimate. But you know. It, it really none of this stuff is uh, rocket rocket science. There, it's it's really just well, a step it, up from an idiot light. Uh, it still it still sounds like math to me. <laughs> yes. So anyway, <laughs> I'll keep you guys up to date. But I I think that my problem, uh, it, at least here of the last couple of years, hasn't been a a cooling issue. It's been a a gauge issue. The reading of the information from the uh, from the uh, the engine itself. Like a faulty gauge. Yeah, yeah this is basically. like a, a faulty computer or a faulty sensor, or I don't know where the fault is, but I'm fixing yeah. it, damn it. Yeah, <laughs> you've definitely gone about the right way to do it, too, uh, when all else fails anyways. Uh, and, you know, there's something that, that, uh, that I've been failing on for a while now, and that's getting my second battery set up uh, going. And, and one thing that's really been, been hi and hindering me on this is, um, well, I can't put my second battery in the back of the Jeep, at least not yet. Uh, and, and I've had a plan this entire time to putting both of the, these yellow top Optimas I've got uh, up in the engine compartment. Uh, the only way that you're going to fit two dual batteries in, the, uh, in, a, in a Cherokee uh, is either in the back, in the cargo you know, compartment, or if you relocate the intake. And, uh, and some guys do that with just laying a pipe over the, uh, over the, um, uh, over the top of the engine. That does not work. There's a company out there, there's a couple of companies, in fact, that, that make 
what are called cowl induction or cowl snorkel kits. And, uh, and this basically, what this does is it relocates the, the air intake and the filter for that intake into the cowl. And this is, the, this is that dead space that is um, right in between the windshield and the engine compartment, kind of where, the, uh, where the, uh, the windshield wiper motor and the linkage and stuff, all that resides in there. It's where the, the heater core um, intake is. It draws the fan in from your, for your, uh, uh, your heater system and stuff like that. Um, all that is in the cowl. And uh, by cutting, a, uh, by cutting a, a hole in the firewall up in the upper left-hand corner, uh, you can reroute that intake up into that area. Now, Thor, a uh, company who, uh, who makes a very, very nice-looking version of this, of this kit, um, is probably the industry leader as far as cowl induction goes. Now, there is another company out there that I refuse to mention on this podcast because I, I will not give them um, any, any degree of attention or anything like that because of a personal experience of mine. However, I will say this, um, their kit looks like crud. Uh, it looks horrible. It looks like you've pieced together a bunch of stovepipe pieces um, underneath, your, uh, underneath the hood of your Jeep. Isn't that not the look that I'm going for? But I also don't want to spend uh, 250 bucks or so on a, uh, on a kit from Thor. So what do you do when you're a cheap ass like me and you want a cowl induction? Uh, well, you build it yourself. And I've been sourcing parts, and, and really the, the key item here to make this kit work, if you're going to do it yourself, is a little product called silicone. And they make these, uh, these silicone elbows now that are preformed. They are high heat resistant. Um, and basically, you're going to use an elbow on the, uh, on the uh, throttle body. Uh, it will uh, then house a pipe that will go over the top of the engine. Um, and then that will head over to the edge of the firewall where another elbow will uh, locate another piece of pipe that a filter will be attached to. And that will be the cowl induction intake that I will be making myself out of parts that I will primarily be sourcing uh, through Amazon.com. Cool beans. Yeah, I need to, uh, now that I have a, um, uh, a snorkel, I need to do the same thing. I need to actually route it, uh, take the box out of there and route the snorkel straight over to the intake, and then I'll have a space for, mm -hmm. for my spare battery. Yeah, yeah. So that's a... Uh, I've had this the battery for a little while now. I still, I, I, I test it and everything. The battery's still good. I'll throw a trickle charge on it every now and again just to, to make sure that uh, it stays up on the amperage and everything like that. But, uh, but yeah, I've, I've been wanting to put a second battery in the Jeep for a while now. Um, and, and this is the only thing that's holding me up. So once I get this out of the way, then it's open season on more batteries. Tammy, are you cricket hunting? Oh, the bug was crawling Oh, you know, I don't mind bugs too much, but when they start crawling on me, that bugs me. Pardon the pun. Sorry. <laughs> so, Tammy, does it bother you that you have this brand new Jeep and Josh and I talk about all these things that we do and the cutting and the holes and the putting the batteries in and stuff, and you're sitting there going, oh, mine's under warranty. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I, I know. I, I like start, I start talking about decals on my Jeep. Oh, yeah. Well, decals are fun. Oh, yeah. I, I start talking about cutting holes in firewalls, and y'all are talking about stickers. <laughs> I know. I'm not ready for that yet. No, that's I still okay, though. I have a couple years of payments. Well, well that's just it. And, and this kind of goes back into, into something that we had uh, in one of our reviews earlier, and, and somebody talked about, yeah, you know, thank you for, for you, know, you know, paying some homage to those of us who, you know, keep our Jeep stock. Um, guys, I, you know, I, I was in that phase, I, I, phase of things for a while. I kept my Jeep stock for a while, uh, built up a lot of the mechanical aspects of it, and then I started actually building it for off-road purposes. I've got a lot of respect for those out there who have a stock Jeep or those out there who are working on, um, a, uh, uh, working on, a, on, a, on a stock build or a restoration or something like that. So, um, guys, whether you're driving a stock Cherokee or a stock JK, a TJ, or even a CJ that you restored that doesn't have a lot done to it, man, I got respect for you just because you're driving a Jeep. So, uh, right. Tammy, talking about those stickers, are you having any problems matching up the purple with the uh, when you get the stickers, or are you just going with whatever sticker you want to put on there? Um, right now, I just have the waves, um, but the wave purple does not match the grill purple, uh -oh. but that's okay. It's but not. I, am, I can tell I by the way you I are. Might, you're looking. Um, it, it's not okay. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe purple's okay, but I think I might get in. I saw this on. I can't remember where it was. Anyway, the inside the where the vents are, the circles that go around yep. it, and then on my door there's like this silver attachment that I can pop off, and I can paint them the same purple as my grills. 
Oh, there you go. You know, there was a guy, I think it was uh, XJ Jeep thing that was a member a long time ago on XJTalk.com, and he did a lot of that accent inside. He right. took he hmm. took paint, yellow paint. It was a yellow uh, XJ, and he took yellow paint and, and, and like, splattered it on uh, various things, doing kind of what you're talking about, but instead of painting the whole thing a color, he kind of, like, this took the paint and, and did the trail across it and splattered it. Right. It looked really good, uh, so it's really neat, and the, the cool thing about that is is that you're sitting in the Jeep whenever you're driving someplace and you get to look at it. You right. know, a lot of the stuff we do, we do is on the outside, so but you can't see it. Yeah. So it's kind of cool doing things on the inside. Um, you, do you have grab handles in, in yours? Does it, did it come yeah, in stock have, with that? Um, I was going to do a review on it one of these days. Um, they're purple, the strap part, but the holding on part is black, but they're purple. Yeah, well, that's what I was going out the direction I was going with it. I was thinking, you know, you, you were talking about those zipper pulls, and I was thinking that would be a perfect thing if somebody would do, but would build you, or maybe you could do, uh, using the paracord in a purple that's close to the color that you like. Oh, you could make your own grab yeah. handles in purple. Yeah, I think I might get the zipper pulls. Um, I think my camera just went down. Yeah, it did. It was weird. I was thinking there was an earthquake there in Maryland. It could be. Um, I think I might order some new zipper pulls and get um, them made in purple. You know, I bet you somebody else wants to know this too. What, do you remember where the where those zipper pulls were from? I have forgotten and I have not gone back to the show to listen. I was going to look at some getting some of those for my wife's TJ. Um, I found the guy on um, the Twitter. <laughs> I'll have to, to find his name. He's on one of my blogs. I'll find it for you, and I'll send it to you. It's, yeah, I mean, I can always go back and look. I just thought you might remember. Uh, yeah, his name was Ken. Yeah, because I, I just... Did he do them in different colors? Oh, yeah. Because I'd, I'd like and to get he, her some red ones to go with her red. Yeah, oh, yeah, he could do red. Mm. And then he, he does red and black together, and he has different kinds of paracord that he uses. I'm suspecting that Josh's color coordination with his Jeep is he wears a black shirt. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much about that. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, no, I've I've gone with a pretty simple color scheme on mine. Well, yours is all about getting over the rocks as fast as humanly possible. So uh, there's uh, there's all kinds of directions to go with your Jeep, and uh, there's not just one. As uh, as we're gonna find out more as we hear from our other contributors. So you better put uh, this fire out here. It's getting kind of big. What? Yeah. You got a fire? Can you hear it? Ah, uh, I got you. Well, <laughs> that was almost as good as a Henaway. <laughs> well, you guys were talking about fires earlier, and I thought maybe she was having some some fires like you were talking having in your area, Josh. Oh yeah, no, I got get you. All right, well that's enough of this. So uh, let's uh, let's move on to uh, our mm -hmm. next thing here. Top zip zipper pulls from Ken Johnson, owner of Top Zip Paracord Thank Products. Thank you. Was it in the show notes? Uh, it was in episode 182 is uh, for those out there looking for a review on those top zip zipper pulls and all the information you guys um, need to check those out. Uh, you can find those over at Jeep Mama's blog. And of course, if you uh, want to check out episode 182 of the XJ Talk Show, uh, that is available for your downloading pleasure right now over at JeepTalkShow.com. Excellent. Well, let's get over to Cody and his first episode of his grand adventure all about the Grand Cherokee. Looking forward to it. Hey guys, it's Cody with TrailChasers.net. Tony, Josh, and Tammy put out a call for listeners that wanted to participate in the new Grand Cherokee section of the podcast, so I threw my hat in the ring. Before I start, here's a little bit about me. I've been wheeling for about 22 years, and I've owned many Jeeps. Two CJ7s, three XJs, one MJ, that's the Comanche pickup that's built on the XJ platform, one TJ, and now I own a 2001 Grand Cherokee WJ. While I owned the TJ, I always wanted to get back into a wagon. I love the wagon body style, and I felt that the previous XJs I owned were the perfect off-road vehicles. The longer wheelbase, the four doors, the cargo space, the front coil and rear leaf suspension, and the perfectly powered 4.0 made it the Swiss Army knife for all of my off-road adventures. And to be honest, I don't care about taking the top off my vehicle anymore. It was fun when I was younger, but now I'm old and I want some goddamn comfort. I know that's not cool <laughs> to say with the Wrangler crowd, but I live in the desert. People think that all of California is by the beach, but no, poor people live in the desert, and that's where I'm at. Where I wheel, it's hot and dusty. I'm tired of melting my forehead off and ending the day with mud in my teeth. I want to roll up the windows, turn on the AC, 
and cruise in leather seated comfort. That's what happens when you get old. If I had an extra 50k sitting around, I would gladly go purchase a beautiful new JKU, but see my previous comments about being broke and living in the desert. <laughs> if I was going to sell the TJ and get into another unibody Jeep, I had to make it work within my budget. With that said, I really thought I'd be back in an XJ. As I searched for my new family off-road vehicle, I found that there were two types of XJs on the market. The first was a fairly stocked vehicle in decent condition. Grandma and Grandpa Jones handed it down to their grandson and little Johnny figured out he had a cash cow on his hands and he wants two kidneys and a lung for the thing. I don't even know if I have two kidneys. <laughs> the second is an older wheeler that someone bought, hacked up, wheeled to hell and is now trying to unload it. The guy knows it's a ticking time bomb and he posted on Craigslist with a title that reads, Ready to go wheeling, which means get a trailer because it's going to explode the first time you take it out. The bottom line is that the XJ was hard to find in Southern California, so I expanded my search. Surprisingly, Jeep produced 432 quadrillion Jeep Grand Cherokee <laughs> since 1993, and most of them have been owned by soccer moms. I haven't quite verified those numbers yet. You might want to check it out on Wikipedia. They come in several different trims and various drivetrains. They're all easy to find, and some of them are in excellent condition. With the XJ becoming harder to get my hands on, the Grand Cherokee has become my new affordable off-road wagon. Do a search on YouTube for Jeep Grand Cherokee Intro 1992 to see how they debuted the first Grand Cherokee at the Detroit Auto Show. Extreme 4x4 has done a really good three-part series on turning the WJ into an expedition vehicle. Check out the full episodes on www.powernationtv.com. I went to the full episode section and just did a search for Jeep Grand Cherokee. As I continue to submit these segments, I'll try to touch on all aspects of the Grand Cherokee. I will compare the Grand Cherokee specs to other Jeeps, talk about the aftermarket support, the communities, and the pros and cons of the vehicles, and hopefully you will all join me on my new grand adventure. Thank you for listening and check out www.trailchasers.net for more info or find us at facebook.com slash trailchasers and on Twitter at trailchasers. And I'll post the transcript of this episode on the blog at trailchasers.net and on XJ Talk. Thanks, guys. Love talking. I love listening to uh, Cody talk. It's just like r reminds me of Adam 12, not Adam 12, uh, Dragnet and uh, Jack, Jack Webb. Oh. Or Adam 12. <laughs> just, just the facts, ma'am. He, facts. he has a great voice and a, a great deli great delivery. And uh, Oh, yeah. No, Cody's Cody's great guy. He's got a great sense of humor, good set of pipes on him as well, and the guy can talk. He's got the gift of gab for sure, and he's a jeeper to the core. Oh, a lot of Love Jeeps. that guy. Yeah. And yeah it's Love it's so guy. sad that he couldn't find the next J. Uh, you know, that's going to be happening since they, the last one they got made was in 2001. The Northwest. They've fallen off of trees over here. <laughs> that's oh, that's that's good to know. I don't see very yeah. many here either. So let's get over to our wheeling wear, another favorite segment, new favorite segment of mine, Josh. Well, this is where we talk about events that are coming up in your guys' neck of the woods and around the nation. The seventh annual Matanzas, <laughs> Matanzas, Matanzas. There we go. Jeep Club Show and Shine. Uh, it's happened in July 18th, St. Augustine Flea Market in St. Augustine, Florida. They've got a Facebook event set up. I could list the whole string of numbers there for you guys, but just go to Facebook.com to the event, event section and check out 7th Annual Matanzas Jeep Club Show and Shine. And there is just a ton of We Rock events going on over the next few weeks. So if you guys want to check out all of the extreme rock crawling and extreme racing and stuff like that, there is just a whole mess of We Rock events that are going on simultaneously around the country right now. So if you're looking for a spectator event, you want to get out and uh, see some really cool rock crawling racing, very competitive racing, head over to WeRockLive.com for the full list of shows and events that are happening in that circuit. And don't forget, Jeep Junkies, whether you're at the park, in the woods, or in the rocks, or even down on the beach, if you pack it in, pack it out. Remember to tread lightly. Let's leave our outdoor recreation spots in as good a condition, if not better, than it was when we arrived. That's it for this week, guys. If you have an event that's coming up in your area, let's get the word out. Whether it is a show and shine, a cruise in, a club run, fundraiser, or a huge event like the Easter Jeep Safari, well, let's get the word out. Let us know by giving us a call or sending us an email to newstips at jeeptalkshow.com. So uh, we want you guys over at xjtalk.com where we, we really go talk about all kinds of Jeeps. It's not just the Cherokees. So please feel, and, and, and I don't know if you're wherever to Josh, but we've been getting people uh, logging on and registering on XJ Talk uh, that have JKs, CJs, uh, Grand Cherokees, the the whole gambit. So a lot like the the Jeep Talk Show is doing, we're doing that on XJ Talk uh, XJTalk.com as well. 
Uh, don't forget about wranglertalk.com. I'm not going to lie to you. It's not real popular. We don't have a lot of people, but I've seen it before. Five people just consistently posting something uh, once or twice a week will make a site explode. And we would like to have you come over and explode our site. That, that, that didn't come out right. So uh, you can find us uh, here on jeeptalk.com. You can find us on xjtalk.com. You can find us on wranglertalk.com. And, uh, well, Tammy, where can they find you? You can find me at jeepmama.com. Where she has a forum, and she basically is uh, doing her forum post here on our show. So if you'd like to get more detail about some of the uh, uh, really brief segments that she gives us here, go over to her site, and you'll get a lot more information a lot more pictures and a lot more selfies. Yes, yeah, but make sure you guys head over mean. to make sure you guys head over to jeeptalkshow.com as well, where you guys can find the entire show archive ready for your downloading pleasure, 100% free. And if you like this podcast, and you're going to like all the others available over at the 4x4 Radio yes, Network, make absolutely. sure you guys check that out as well. They're a lot of fun. I mean, I've been having a blast listening to those shows. And oh uh, yeah, if you it, guys are into off road, you definitely got to check out the 4x4 Radio Network. A lot, of, a lot of good information, and uh, it, we're all 4x4 four four brothers. It doesn't matter what we're driving. Indeed. Guys, check us out on Facebook as well, Jeep Talk Show. We are on the Twitter, at Jeep Talk Show. <laughs> Make sure you include us in those, in those tweets. Hashtag Jeep Talk Show. So until next week, we'll see you later. Have a great Jeep week. We'll see you guys see next you later, time. Bye-bye. Everyone.